Dallas. Also, the net players that the uh, the Nets got from Dallas had a press conference in Brooklyn. But let's listen to uh, Kyrie. Uh, he said that he felt disrespected at times in Brooklyn. In the seat today, I just know I want to be places where I'm celebrated uh, and not just tolerated or, or, or just, um, you know, kind of dealt with in a way that doesn't make me feel respected. Um, and there were times throughout this process when I was in Brooklyn where I felt very disrespected and my talent uh, worked extremely hard at what I do. No one ever talks about my work ethic, though. Everyone talks about what I'm doing off the floor. So um, I just want to change that narrative and write my own story and just continue to prepare in the gym. And now that I'm in Dallas, just focus on what I can control, like I said. And, um, you know, I'm always going to be close with those guys in Brooklyn, just like I'm close with guys in Boston, just like I'm close to guys in Cleveland. I don't even I don't even want to break down what he says anymore because I think he's full of it. Listen, they don't respect my work ethic. You, you played half the games when you were there. there played half the games. There's exactly there's exactly one thing he can be referring to in any real way. The only thing he can be referring to is that supposed list that they gave him of things he had to do in order to sort of bend the knee to the organization. Right. That, to me, is the only ground that I believe he could stand on realistically where I could say, you know what, that was a bit much. It was heavy-handed. It didn't look good for the Nets. We all said that, that at the time. We all thought that looked bad and wasn't the play. Beyond that, how the Nets could have disrespected him, I don't understand. Well, it's the joke I say about Michael. You know, if you're not bowing at the altar of Michael, you're disrespecting him. And I think that's where he's at. Where if you're not celebrating him, agreeing with him 100% for everything that he stands for and everything he does, then you don't get it. You're disrespecting him. And even if you were on board, let's say you're a general manager of an NBA team and you 100% supported him for the vaccine mm -hmm. and you 100% uh, uh, supported him walking away because of social justice and backed him and believed him that he didn't mean to retweet the book. Don't you look at it and say, I can't completely get behind a guy that's going to play 50% of the games? That's all it really comes down to, right? So, Kyrie, you have a work ethic. We've said it nauseam how talented a player you are, but you played in 55% of the games. Isn't that what it's about? <clears throat> Availability? Uh, here he is. Uh, he was it was followed up by a reporter. Well, how did the Nets disrespect you? I think that's another uh, day where I could really go into detail about it. I, I'm not the person to really speak on names and go to someone behind their back and, and try to leak stuff to the media. That's never been me. Um, now, I've been an audience member of watching people say things about me um, that ultimately just fall off my shoulder. Uh, I'm uh, really uh, in a place that I, I'm grateful that I got to grow. I got to grow into uh, over the last year and a half, two years, uh, spending time away from the, ba the basketball court, giving me time to really appreciate life in a new way. And um, I just know I need healthy boundaries, especially in this entertainment business. There's a lot of disrespect that goes on with people's families, with their names, and I I'm just not with it. Uh, so it's not personal against any of those guys against in the front front office. It's just what I'm willing to accept. Um, and I took a chance, and luckily, unfortunately, the Dallas Mavericks picked me up. So it's just all of what I can control. He just talks in verbal stews. You well, know, he, gets, he throws as many words out there that don't make any sense when they're put together. And he, want, he, he wants to be mysterious because he's smarter than well, us. And that's exactly what he's doing. Well, and he's also, I, I, I think... He's so nebulous on it all, right? So let's say you're a fan of Kyrie. You can go, wow, the Nets must have really disrespected him. Uh, they disrespected his family. Uh, he didn't mention any names. We don't know if it's true or not well, that, true. No, that I think he was talking about the media disrespecting his family and his... Well, well, maybe, said, maybe, how did the Nets the disrespect him? Oh, that is the question. question. Uh, yeah. Well, now, oh, because, it's because his stepmom's his agent? Well, because well, you know what? The, the way that a lot of athletes weigh respect is whether or not you pay them. He wanted four years, $195 million, and the Nets said, no, we're good. Well, that's what it comes down to. 
But unfortunately, that can't be the reason, Michael, because the public narrative won't, wouldn't support him if it was just about the money. So he's got to throw out how he was disrespected and leave little hints like his family was disrespected. I'm not going to name names, so maybe somebody specifically in that organization disrespected him beyond the contract. We don't know if any of it's true or not, but it's stuff that fans of Kyrie can gobble up yep. as evidence yep. to support him and say, boy, the Brooklyn Nets did him wrong. The Brooklyn Nets did everything for this guy. They they didn't let him. I mean, the Brooklyn Nets made a big mistake when they laid down when the, when there was the vaccine rule in New York City. They said, "Well, we're not going to have him play half the games." And then when they didn't get off to a good start, they capitulated and let him play games on the road. That was stupid. They didn't handle that well. And it's not the Brooklyn Nets' fault. It was a it was a New York City ordinance, not a Brooklyn Nets ordinance. So what did he want the Brooklyn Nets to do? He is always the victim. Always. He never does anything wrong. It will end poorly in Dallas. He'll go to the Lakers. It'll end poorly there. This guy is not a happy ending guy. It's always going to be a situation where something went wrong and he was the victim. He's always the victim. He's never the reason everybody else is wrong. He's never wrong because he's smarter than us. He went to Duke probably for half a semester, and he's smarter than us. We can't understand because he's above us mentally. So I can't. I really can't get behind what he's saying because I don't understand him. I'm not that bright, Peter. I'm done. I'm kind of done dealing with, like, discussing what he says it's all such a troll my ire now is turned towards will anyone from this organization who's left here from sean marks to joe Sy to any of the players will anyone no step because, up and be like oh god we're happy to be done with be, it because they have to tiptoe around not taking off durant Do, who's could, still is who's still his buddy but KD's going to be offended now if someone says, hey, KD you know what? KD is the guy who really, if he wants to further burnish his reputation, should come out and say Kyrie was wrong about a lot of this stuff. But KD's going to be on Kyrie's side because they didn't give Kyrie the money. Kyrie has some kind of hold over KD. I don't know what it is. Well, but believe me, Rich Kleiman, he could call up if he says I'm wrong. He wanted Durant to play for the Knicks. He had a dream of being the Knicks GM. Rich Kleiman wanted to be Leon Rose. So he wanted Kevin Durant with the Knicks. But Kyrie convinced him, nah, let's make it happen in Brooklyn. They made it happen, okay. They they almost single-handedly, mostly Kyrie, brought down a franchise. Brought down any equity that the franchise had um, with the city, uh, with the NBA players, with the culture that they were building. They, they, uh, they capitulate to every one of their demands, starting with firing Kenny Atkinson, following up by bringing in Steve Nash, a neophyte as coach, to drive a Lamborghini. And the first time they showed any guts is when they got rid of Nash. But that was something that Durant wanted, too. Because remember, he said, I want the GM and the and the coach fired for me to come back. Joe Sy said no, but seven games in, they did get rid of the coach, and they bring in Jock Vaughn, who seems like he really has a good feel for this. But it says all the right things. But I do think, you know, getting back to the availability thing, would it be so wrong for the Nets to not kill Kyrie? Just say, listen, what are we supposed to do? We play 55% of our games. Sorry, we need somebody who's going to be available to us 24-7. We appreciate his talents. We appreciate all the things that he contributes financially off the court. His heart's in a good place. But we're trying to build a champion here, and we just can't but, do it with a guy that's going to only play half the game. But you know what Kyrie would say? I was forced to miss half the games last year because of the vaccine. That wasn't on me. And I'm not, I wasn't taking the vaccine for anything. Because who was it yesterday that we had on? Jay Williams said that they offered him a, a fully guaranteed contract if he took the vaccine. He said no. So I give him credit for that. Yeah. Turned out a lot of money. He said, no, okay. I'm not going to do it. But then he'll say, okay, I can play half the game. So that, that, that brings it up to about 60%. Then um, I got suspended for eight games because of something that I thought was not such a terrible thing to but do. But he was wrong about that. Right. I'm sorry. But, and then he said, I walked away because of social uh, injustice in the country, and that's on me. All the time I hurt my shoulder. He, he has like, an excuse for everything. Right, but like Peter said so eloquently yesterday, if one or two things, you can buy it, but it always seems to happen to him. Why? It's just so many. There's just too many things. And for whatever the reason, good, bad, or indifferent, I just need you available. Yeah, the circumstances of the vaccine were unfortunate. The shoulder injury was unfortunate. The social justice thing, I get. The retweet, I don't get. Well, that's four things right there. And that's not all of them. And that's not all of them. Absolutely not all of them. I'm just like, 
I'm just at a point now where I'm, I'm sick after all these months on the air in this market particular, where we talk about a lot because not only does everyone talk about the story, but it's a local story. Like, I've given him the benefit of the doubt. I know it sounds like we're hard on him. I've actually repeatedly... You've bent over backwards to try to be that guy. Dude, I tried. After he literally retweeted a movie that if you watched it for seven minutes or read the description of it, you will be very, very, it's very clear that it's playing on anti-Semitic tropes, like really basic anti-Semitic tropes. There's a, a misquoted Hitler quote in there. This is not hard stuff. And by the way, to be clear, he said that he, he said that he read the book, I believe, and watched the film. Okay, so it's not as if he didn't have any idea. I still said, hey, he apologized. It's enough. Let's move on. I, and I am not the only Jewish person who said that. Many people were like, you know what? Don't browbeat the guy. Don't try to prove a point. Let's move forward. And at every step trying to move forward, he makes it impossible. And you realize when you hear him talk and what he's saying right now, it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. It, it, you know what it is? It's like a lot of things in this country. It's a grift. He's a grifter. He goes from one place to the next to suck up the money and move on to the next thing and at the same time martyr himself in each place. And there are people, good people, who somehow buy into it. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, I feel for him. Everyone goes after him. You know why people go after him? Because he says ridiculous and offensive things. It's unbelievable. It's hard to defend him, and we're not even going to try. So